Hello, my name is Tim. This is Mateo, Deborah, Arshia, and Megan. And we are React. Had my first concussion when I was 15 and my most recent one at 20. The only thing that stayed the same was the test I took. Conditions were very different. I know for a fact that concussions have a big problem. And I definitely would lie to a physician to mislead them to think that I was fine when my symptoms could not be seen to help me get back into the game. Two alternatives to our product right now are the King Devitt and the SCAT test. Both have categorical data in their tests that help an athlete lie about their symptoms. Our solution is an app that tested before the hit at baseline and then test it again afterwards. So the difference is we measure reaction time and cognitive awareness before and after and compare them to see if there's any indication of a potential concussion. Our solution, if it detects a potential concussion, it will direct you to the nearest clinician where you'll be diagnosed further by a professional. Our goal is to get you diagnosed as soon as possible to prevent further injury. Our three profiles that we're focusing on are based on um, three psychosocial profiles. First would be the buyers, and they were our parents and our parent coaches. So they're the ones that pay the hockey fees at the beginning of the season, every season, and they want part of those fees to go towards protecting their child while they're on the ice. Our users are the hockey players themselves. The, they'll be the ones that actually use our app and have the baseline test and the test afterwards. Uh, they're the ones pursuing their hockey dream and the ones who have the problem in the first place. Product development will begin in April 2019. Then a medical license and a patent will be applied to for the process of the software. In September, marketing campaigns will begin to gain traction and to allow teams to budget in for our product. October, uh, trials will run with the UFC athletic program so we can gain more feedback. Our product will be launched in April 2020. Research and development will continue as we gather more data from the customer segment. Our in-game concussion test is affordable as it is less expensive than our competitors and is an investment to make. Accessible. It can be administered by anyone, anywhere for on-location testing and accurate. The metrics we use are based on reaction time and can be used as a complement for other concussion tests. So our product has three advantages over the competition. First, our software process is patentable. Second, through our university affiliations, we have direct contact with people that can consult us and give us medical research. And finally, through Tim's athletic background, we have an in into the hockey market. So taking a look at our startup costs, it is primarily made up of labor, software prototyping, marketing, and medical trials. Software prototyping includes things such as the basic functions of the application, test integration, and data storage. So we will have two, we will have two, we will have two monthly options as uh, subscription payments. One will be for teams and one will be for individual athletes. Uh, there will also be a mandatory 99 cent report fee for every report that is issued for an athlete. Our primary user channels will be through word of mouth, trade shows and expos, and uh, you can actually buy our product or application online through our website or through uh, the App Store. We will have no revenue in the first year. For our validation, we spoke to Haley, Miles, and Micah, who all said that current tests are subjective and easy for athletes to fake, so our test needs to be objective and more accurate. We also spoke to various athletes within Impact Sports, as well as we received a letter of intent from the men's UFC hockey team to be part of our first trials as our innovators. For our ask, we're asking for $98,000 for our startup costs, as well as your experience and connections that you have built throughout your career to help us pr develop our product. Thank you, and we will now open the floor to questions. Hi. Great presentation. Um, just wondering if you could kind of walk me through the testing that you'd normally take versus this online testing, how the accuracy of it will pinpoint to a concussion. Great concussion question. Uh, I played in the Western Hockey League for five years, and we were always um, exposed to one in-game test. And that test was called the SCAT test. Now, the physician or your trainer would administer this test, and they would ask you, how's your headache? Well, what's the difference between on a scale of 1 to 10 or a 4 or a 5, right? So that was the only test we had, measurement and the memorization of uh, doing the alphabet backwards. And I don't know if I could do it correctly right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in that point, we, our goal was to identify a concussion a little bit better than that. So 
our metrics aren't based on scaling your headache or one to five, or does the lights make you dizzy? Well, if you're gonna stare at a light, it's probably gonna make you a little dizzy. <laughs> um, so that's kind of our goal, if that answers your question, sorry. Sure, and I guess the secondary component would be then, how is this assessment online, this app, how does it identify it more quickly than doing the alphabet backwards? So instead, our app, it's kind of like a game where you do a simple process where you just, let's say, match up the dots or connect any, some sort of dots. It'd be like an abstract process that you do, and we'd measure you before impact at a baseline, and then you take the exact same test afterwards, and any difference between your test scores would indicate a slower reaction time and decreased cognitive awareness, which would be indications of a potential concussion. Okay, and those indications you've run by medical professionals, okay? Right, we got some secondary research to kind of back that up as to uh, where those metrics came from. Okay, thank you. So, uh, yeah, you did find something interesting, which I've experienced as a, as a coach, where uh, parents encourage their children to gas the baseline test. I've actually experienced that twice now. Uh, how do you deal with that situation, um, you know, where the, uh, where the individual deliberately tries to lower the score? Yeah, and I think I find that a little bit more when, when, when the stakes are higher say when the New York Islanders in the stands, right? I think at that point when, when we're targeting our early adopters as in minor hockey, we can get them a little bit more educated about, okay, this is what's gonna happen. These are the side effects. You know, maybe a little bit more engaged on the fact of maybe more informational education just for the parents like your guys yourself, I'm sure. So I think if the baseline test gets thrown, I mean, there isn't a very definitive way to show that they're lying for sure. But many, uh, the secondary issues, like Mike Kareem said, um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're doing that in your own situation, especially in Major Junior, he really didn't say too much about our early adopters and young kids throwing the test, but that, that's a good question to definitely to look into. Yeah, I, I would suggest you do some research because you could probably gamify it and uh, use high reaction times to alternate. Um, anyways, it's something, okay, so. Absolutely, thank yeah. you. Um, I saw that you had a. Uh, oh, sorry, no. I saw that you had a kind of like a one-year um, validation period where, you, and you were going to be in market at that point. I was wondering um, if you think that it, why you think that it's possible to validate that this is an effective means of testing this, and kind of get enough information to prove that that's the case that it works, and then get people to adopt it within one year. Very, very, very good question. And uh, we were the first semester for this class, mm -hmm. so and I know we didn't really think anything past it one year. And uh, so we were talking downstairs and Arshia mentioned it, that our timeline is very, very inaccurate. Like it's gonna take more than one year and, and I think we all agree on that. And we, we couldn't change our slides to begin with. So mm -hmm. I know it's, it's, you see what you get, but I agree it's, it's very inaccurate, but that's what we have so far. Have you uh, considered talking to Hockey Canada or some of the sports associations to sort of take a top-down approach to get, you know, leagues, uh, various different age, age groups to kind of adopt this? And yeah. We, same approach, too, for football or any other contact sports? Absolutely. And um, one of the things with the available means for this class, and I was a hockey player, and actually one of our assistant coaches is head of hockey development or Hockey Canada in, in the education, uh, Pierre uh, Poulin, and he uh, let me talk to the insurance guy who deals with Hockey Canada, and they – they get passed on with uh, lots of different ideas, but it's the insurance background of it. Um, we were more talking about um, getting, going to like to tournaments, trying to talk to um, awareness to like parents, maybe they want to try the idea. But right now, Hockey Canada is maybe the end goal for sure, maybe get it administered uh, nationwide, but right now we're trying to look for those early adopters like our uh, early parents. 